On Mother 3's birthday this past April, I showed off the development of my Animal Crossing New Horizons Island I modeled after the location of the same name, Tane Tane, in that game. It also marked exactly one month since New Horizons launched, and because we were only at the start of the 2020 pandemic back then, I had a lot of free time in self-quarantine. I put in about 100 hours in the span of that month, and nearly triple that in the 9 months that have since passed. It's my most played game on the Switch. I figured then it was time for a progress update. I've improved and added a lot since that video, just as the game itself has evolved with its monthly updates. A major feature brought back from New Leaf that I was most looking forward to allows players to visit a dream version of others' islands at any time. I think I'm finally happy enough with Tane Tane that I've uploaded it into the dreamscape. So if you have New Horizons and would like to explore it for yourself via hallucination, I'll list the dream address in the description. I can assure you it will be a much more pleasant experience than Lucas and Company's nightmare. You won't even have to be whacked with a 2x4 to come to your senses either, just talk to Luna. I'm starting to feel a little dandy myself, so let's go ahead and get ready to paint the town red, green, yellow, yellow. First things first, and just as my neighbors love to keep talking about for some reason, I have some new bug friends I'd like to introduce. This here is a nameless mole cricket, the first enemy fought in Mother 3, who isn't as strong as he thinks he is. On the opposite wall is an arachnid. You're required to say its name like you're surprised because of the exclamation marks. I probably shouldn't show you the rest of the house though, as there's an ant here we might accidentally step on. So let's just head outside. I'll change out of my pajamas first. Hmm, striped shirt and shorts like normal? No, it's pretty cold out there. I'll dress up like my dad instead. Looking handsome. I should mention that a save frog recently took up residence right outside the house, which would otherwise be pretty handy, but it's already super easy to save in this game. He makes a great ATM though. Boney over here was missing at the time of the last video too, but he's back safe now. It's been a while since I've seen him move or do anything though, which is a little suspicious. I can only hope he's not gallivanting around somewhere in human clothes, posing as some dog-like dude. I'll have him take me for a walk later. But for now, it's time to meet the new neighbors. Over the bridge and past the river, we have Drago. He's usually pretty fun to play around with, but let's just say we're not on speaking terms at the moment. It's going to take a few years at least to get over that grudge. The area he lives in is dedicated to the twins' mom. There's a stack of hay Alec and Wes apparently piled here when they were sleepwalking, a radio used by local pig mask soldiers, and the not quite sunflower fields using yellow lilies. The white lilies here are supposed to resemble clouds, and many have reported seeing a spirit here, though most of the time it's only wisp. This amazing portrait of Hinawa was made by Rotom Nation, who was kind enough to leave a code to their work here. I'll list it in the description as well, so you can download it in Animal Crossing for yourself. Moving forward, this isn't modeled after Nowhere's Sunset Cemetery or anything, but I did roll up my sleeves like Nippolite and install a graveyard. Be very wary of any nighttime strolls though, as you never know what's going to come out from underneath the graves. Oh, and watch out for the graves themselves too. Some of them have been known to be unusually wobbly. There's a skeleton here hiding behind a tree that seems scary at first, but it's actually here to cheer up the place. It's time to pass on by the gravesite, but we're not done looking at tombstones yet. Besides Hinawa's, there are five placed in a familiar pattern, hearkening back to the first and second game in the Mother series. These are an allusion to the Flying Men, erected next to what was their home, which has been vacant for so long it's now inhabited by a clay man. This little area is a nod to Queen Mary's Magicant with the shell motif, and Ness's Magicant with all the snow folk you can talk to. One of them has just about melted away but will still exist in your memory, while this one knows the name of the girl you used to like. 
Nevertheless, they're all happy to be remembered. Where is Buzz Buzz's final resting place, you may be asking? There's no tombstone here, and he's certainly not in the trees because a bee he is not. But then again, neither are these anyway. They're wasps. The localizers finally fixed that for New Horizons. I also placed a fridge up here next to one of the snowboys and closer to the cemetery as a sort of shout out to Mother 3's flying whatchamacallit, that white metal box used to descend Snowcap Mountain. But this one's blue. It's the only color variant I had, okay? It's the thought that counts. You can pretend a happy happiest vandalized it. Further into the mountains is another Drago. It's likely the mother, but it's all mechanized now. Unfortunately, I still don't have any pig villagers living on Tane Tane. I'm hoping Rasher moves over from my wife's island. These poor residents have all been without happy boxes for too long. They need a king who will unite and protect them from strangely frequent and seemingly intentional lightning strikes. The last thing I want to show off today though has us passing through the nice person hot springs over to a UFO. That's either a mother pork ship or the Starmen never disbanded after Gigas' defeat. That's a bit intimidating, but luckily we're near the highway so if you need a quick getaway vehicle, there should be a Mr. Saturn coffee table parked around here somewhere. But there you have it. During this showcase, you likely noticed a lot of balloon presents scattered around the island I never pocketed. That idea actually came from commenter Nick K. Since they're near identical to the Mother series gift boxes, it was fun to pop them all to try and have them drop in earthbound-like places, such as behind this trash can. I've shown off where some of them are already, but I'll keep the rest a secret. There are a total of seven balloon presents some a tad more inconspicuous than others, so I challenge you to try and find them all. I promise I will write a haiku for the first person to comment here listing each of their locations. Oh, and what's inside doesn't mean anything. They are just random balloon presents after all. You can always pretend to hear a reggae rhythm after opening one. I'd still be cautious of the Mr. Saturn present though. There's much, much more to check out on the island, especially if you haven't watched my previous video. My creator ID, where you can find all the patterns I designed, like the faceplant sprites and my flag, are in the description. Most of what I had in mind while terraforming and decorating Tane Tane was inspired by the Mother series. But some of my other interests have trickled in as well. Like this area, inspired by Chulip, a cult classic PS2 game I adore and have made a few videos about in the past. It features the unforgettable lover's tree and an homage to Long Lifetown. Do keep in mind that not everything is a reference to something else. Certain objects are placed just to be strange or funny, but not heartrending. Still, keep your eyes peeled. I decided to upload my island on a very specific day, New Year's Day, because the new year is pretty significant at the end of Mother 3's story. Rope Snake repeatedly wishes the party a happy new year. There's a New Year's Eve bomb that's ultra effective against the king statue. And Porky does gather all of the Nowhere Island's inhabitants for a twisted end of the world celebration at New Pork City. I'm sure many are alleviated that this year of 2020 in particular has come to an end. And it may feel like it to some, but our world hasn't ended yet. I hope you all beyond the screen have a happy new year yourselves, and I hope that everyone watching this will look forward to my videos in 2021. Now to end this video with a sparrow-like chirp chirp. Thanks. Oh, my God.